district courts and district court judges of the United States have been mistaken for Article III courts and judges since the Judiciary Act of 1789. The mistaken belief that a court has jurisdiction is sufficient to confer it when everyone is equally mistaken, but that jurisdiction remains what it is and not what it is mistaken to be. Names or labels and like book covers do a notoriously bad job of identifying contents. Just as a book cannot be accurately judged by its cover, a federal trial court is not accurately described by the name of the state where it is located. The names of the federal trial courts in the several states are labels that are fully explained in the first sentence of the historical and revision notes that are part of the law. Sections 81 to 131 of this chapter show the territorial composition of districts and divisions by counties as of January 1, 1945. Since the conclusion of the Civil War, the states of the Union are the federal territory within the state and the state officers who have taken an oath to uphold the United States Constitution. Since President's Day, the mayor of San Francisco has extended the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment to its logical conclusion by permitting same-sex couples to pay a tax in order to obtain an application, license and certificate of marriage just like anyone else. States cannot regulate marriage but the federal government can tax it by license. The state of California like other opponents of gay marriage is learning that the courts cannot enjoin the collection of a tax, especially one that is voluntary. The right to marry is a human right and human rights are to be secured by government not abridged. Government involvement in marriage is limited to imposing a tax on those who submit to an application process and payment for a license and obtaining a certificate of registration. The subject matter of Chapter 5 of Title 28 U.S.C. is the territorial composition of districts and divisions by counties as of January 1, 1945 of the courts named in Sections 81 to 131 which can only be the areas subject to the exclusive jurisdiction of the United States, Federal Territory. These areas consist of places like the national parks, military bases, federal buildings and federal courthouses. Crimes that occur on or in these federal places are federal crimes and the federal courts for the district is the proper forum for trials of those crimes. Article 3 judicial power is not needed for those courts and those courts are certainly without such power. There is no room for legalistic interpretations of Chapter 5. On January 1, 1945, the judicial districts of United States District Courts had only one thing in common. Those judicial districts consisted of federal territory and some admiralty jurisdiction for some coastal courts. Those common characteristic have not changed since then and even if they had the January 1, 1945 date was to be used to reckon the federal territories existing on a given date. The January 1, 1945 date is critical to understanding the United States District Court's territorial jurisdiction as consisting of federal territory as of a time in a span of time. The first day of 1945 forces the mind to focus on that which can change within geographical boundaries, federal territory, which can be increased by purchase and consent of the legislature of the state. The only legislation, since the first Judiciary Act on September 24, 1789, to create an Article III United States District Court is found in Section 91 of Title 28 U.S.C. That section documents the change of a territorial court to an Article III court without actually giving the court Article III judicial power. Nothing can be done to change the nature of these courts in the several states without the direct intervention of Congress by legislation. A judge without judicial power can do nothing to change the jurisdiction of the court where he presides. Any litigant or defendant in any federal court proceeding who attempts to have the United States District Court consider the issues raised in this letter should be aware that the American Law Institute's restatement of judgments holds that such a litigant is bound by the court's ruling. A federal judge sitting in a trial court in any United States District Court is without judicial power. While such an official can be a life-tenured bureaucrat, such an official cannot be expected to rule other than administratively. These are the facts. No United States District Court in any state may lawfully exercise Article III court power. The lawful jurisdiction of the federal district court or courts is limited to those places where Congress has exclusive jurisdiction. It is also clear that federal judges and federal courts have been used in the past by the federal government to control those persons opposed to the usurpation of power by the national government. The federal courts known as United States District Courts are federal and territorial in that these courts implement administrative law on territory exclusively under the jurisdiction of the corporate United States. United States District Courts are being used by the Administrative Congress primarily to prevent the rendition of law and equity in national courts by masquerading as Article III courts. These courts are incapable of achieving justice because they are not Article III courts. 
Generally speaking, we have a federal government that consists of an administrative congress of the corporate United States, a administrative president of the corporate United States and district courts of the United States because there is one in Hawaii and one is Washington, D.C. The true nature of the government of the United States of America is libertarian. Very few of the posterity of the people that ordained and established the Constitution are aware that the loose confederation of state governments that became the United States of America is a true libertarian government. The purpose of the Constitution was to establish and limit government to the purposes for which it was established. Unfortunately, the Administrative Congress has used very effectively the mechanisms in the Constitution to limit the third branch of the national government to the people's detriment. Congress has intentionally failed or refused to provide Article III courts in the several states. The present intent of the federal government is to subject citizens of the several states to its administration. Most if not all people who find themselves in a federal court are not aware that court has no Article III judicial power. Americans do not want to be in federal courts that cannot dispense justice. For more than 200 years Americans have been subjected to administrative law in courts they believed were dispensing the judicial power of the United States. Disguised administrative courts are being used to subvert freedom. The federal district courts are administrative, legislative, non-judicial courts that are an extension of any administrative harassment caused by persons claiming to represent the de jure national government. Individuals appointed to United States district courts are permitted to believe that they are Article III judges because they are appointed for life. These individuals are actually urged by the other two branches of federal government to act like Article III judges. Article III judicial power imposes self-restraint on judges. Only judges appointed to Article III courts may exercise the judicial power of the United States found in Article III, Section 2. Judicial power imposes restraints on the judges that have it and that serves as some protection from judicial abuse. All justices appointed to the Administrative Supreme Court of the United States are genuine Article III judges. The judges of other than judicial courts, of course, have no constitutional judicial power so they tend to be extremely rigid in the way they administer their judicial business. These judges are or can be called territorial, legislative or administrative. The rigidity of the non-judicial court is the result of the tight reign that the Congress maintains over the personnel and business of non-Article III courts to solely achieve congressional purposes. The Constitution is a limitation on Congress. The Constitution grants to Congress power to create courts by exercising three different powers. At various times in the history of this country Congress has created courts using these various powers under Article I, Article III, and Article IV of the Constitution. 1. The Congress shall have power to constitute tribunals inferior to the Supreme Court. 2. The judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one Supreme Court and such inferior courts as the Congress may from time to time ordain and establish. 3. The Congress shall have power to dispose of and make all needful rules and regulations respecting the territory or other property belonging to the United States. Article 3 courts would also be limited to a territorial jurisdiction. Based on examination of the statute law that created the various territorial United States district courts throughout the several states, Article III courts would also be of limited federal territorial jurisdiction. Lawyers and judges must be aware of the true nature of the courts they practice and preside in. Everyone must be made aware that the United States district courts established in Washington and in 48 other states by United States statute are not Article III courts. There should be no confusion as to the difference between Article III courts and those courts that are not Article III courts. Article III district courts are not territorially different from the tribunals inferior to the Administrative Supreme Court that Administrative Congress may constitute pursuant to Article I. Federal courts do not extend their judicial districts beyond federal territory. Article III courts are territorial courts that may exercise the judicial power of the United States. Article I and IV courts have no such power. Congress has established Article III district courts in Hawaii and the District of Columbia. The two district courts of the United States that were ultimately pronounced ordained and established by Congress pursuant to Article III of the Constitution are the only ones that can exercise the judicial power of the national government. Lifetime tenure during good behavior is criteria for a judge not criteria for an Article III court. Lifetime tenure fuels the universal presumption in the legal academic community that the federal district's courts are Article III courts and the judges that sit on those courts are Article III judges. Because Congress can make law locally or nationally, it must be presumed that law enacted by Congress is territorial in scope rather than national, 
Foley Bros Inc. v. Filardo 336 U.S. 281, 1949, unless a contrary intent is shown in the legislation itself. The legislation creating the District Court for Hawaii is a clear example of the presumption and an example of a national legislative intent to create an Article III court. Combining the District Court for Puerto Rico with the other United States District Courts identifies them all as territorial. The federal district courts are found in Title 28 U.S.C. Judiciary and Judicial Procedure, in the sections numbered from 81 to 131. Title 28 U.S.C. was enacted into positive law in 1948. The district courts were found in Chapter 5 just as they are today. The districts themselves had not changed from 1911 when they were described as the territory that existed on July 1, 1910. The territory was, for example, the State of California, which then and now consists of the federal territory within California. Puerto Rico is not a state of the Union. Its inclusion in Chapter 5 and appearance in Section 119 identifies the states in the sections of Chapter 5 as mere labels for the areas of federal territory. The Commonwealth of Puerto Rico includes the federal territory under the jurisdiction of the corporate United States. Included, for example, in the state of California, is the territory of the United States located in the California Republic. Use of the state of California facilitates the use of federal law to create a California personal income tax. State of California denotes those special federal places where the United States has jurisdiction. Congress established the only Article III court for a state of the Union in Hawaii. Hawaii appears in Section 91 as the only Article III court but that court is qualified as to the way judges are to be appointed to that court. That qualification precludes the exercise of Article III judicial power by any judge appointed to that court. Under the heading for Section 91 Hawaii, Court of the United States, District Judges, will found, Section 9A of Pub. L-86-3 which provides that, the United States District Court for the District of Hawaii established by and existing under Title 28 of the United States Code shall thenceforth be a court of the United States with judicial power derived from Article 3 of the Constitution of the United States. Provided, however, that the terms of office of the district judges for the District of Hawaii then in office shall terminate upon the effective date of this section and the President, pursuant to Sections 133 and 134 of Title 28, United States Code, as amended by this Act, shall appoint, by and with the advice and consent of the Senate, two district judges for the said district who shall hold office during good behavior. All of Title 28 U.S.C. provides for the territorial government of the United States and nothing of Article 3 can be put back into it without destroying the entire Title 28 U.S.C. as positive law. In other words, there may be a present belief by all of the state and federal judiciary, all the legal academic community and all the local, state and federal government officials that the United States District Courts for the 50 states of the Union are Article 3 courts, but they are wrong. Congress prevented the ordination of the Article 3 it established for Hawaii by denying the court full Article 3 judges. Congress took a territorial court established by an existing rule under Title 28 and created an Article 3 district court for Hawaii. It must be noted that the territorial jurisdiction did not change, only the description of the court. Congress has provided that territorial Title 28 U.S.C. judges be appointed to the United States District Court for the District of Hawaii or to be appointed to an Article 3 court. The district judges for the District of Hawaii are specifically to be appointed by the President pursuant to Sections 133 and 134 of Title 28, United States Code, as officers of the United States but not as judges of an Article III court. These two sections are also to be used in appointing any of seven judges of the Puerto Rico District should a vacancy occur there. It can be deduced that appointment pursuant to Sections 133 and 134 of Title 28 will always produce territorial judges. The Hawaii Judicial District established in Section 91 of the Judicial Code of 1948 was a territorial court. Section 9A above clearly indicates that prior to the admission to statehood, the United States District Court of Hawaii was not a true United States court established under Article 3 of the Constitution to administer the judicial power of the United States, Balzac v. Puerto Rico, 258 U.S. 298, 312, 1922. In Balzac, Chief Justice William Howard Taft stated that United States District Court for Arecibo, Puerto Rico, as Puerto Rico was known then, created by virtue of the sovereign congressional faculty, granted under Article 4, Section 3, of that instrument, 
of making all needful rules and regulations respecting the territory belonging to the United States. Puerto Rico is the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico and it has not been incorporated into the United States though its inhabitants are United States citizens. The inclusion of Puerto Rico in Chapter 5 as Section 119 does not make the District Court for Puerto Rico an Article 3 court because Puerto Rico has not been incorporated into the Union. Puerto Rico fits comfortably among the names of the 50 states because the geographical areas are many federal territories or federal enclaves.